Today, I'm gonna build Rocket League out of Lego with working controllable cars and a huge Lego stadium so I can play the game in real life using Lego. Also, this video is sponsored by Shopify. More on them later. So step one, we need to build the base. We're gonna build a Rocket League stadium using base plates and walls. We need to start by laying out the base plates. We're gonna make this thing five Lego base plates wide. So now we have to go eight long and then we'll have our stadium. And the checkered look is actually not too bad. Especially with the designs we're gonna be putting over it, it's gonna look a lot cooler. But for now, since we have two different colors, Let's add the rest. This should give us plenty of room to actually play Rocket League with remote control Lego cars. So the next step is to actually lock these together and then we can build the goals. As you can see, it's all locked together. We're gonna actually put blue and orange details on it because those are the two colors in Rocket League of most of the stadiums. The plan for this is to actually have two remote control Lego cars that we build and we can actually play Rocket League. I even got a special Lego soccer ball. So the next step is to build the goals that are gonna go on both sides of this. For the goals, I got a bunch of different pieces too. We have a lot of clear pieces because the backs of the goals are kind of clear. <clears throat> Sorry, I was just sick. My voice is like bleh. So we got some curved pieces for the corners that are way too big. Wait a minute. All right, this is the size of the goal here. So let's just build up this a little bit and get a feel for where the glass is gonna go. Okay, so if we have the curved pieces right here, and then over in front of that, we have this, that should work. So let's take this. We'll connect these together with these plates and then connect the next section. Okay, there's that, and that goes right there. Now to actually hinge this, we can use these special pieces. On one side, we'll take one of these Erlings and we'll put it right here so we can connect this. And now we can hinge it. And on the other side, this piece. And now we snap this together. Nice. And now we have a hinging goal. It's very beautiful. And then we need to build up these walls because these are also cool. Now on the design I'm going with, there's like these tanks. So I'm gonna build a couple of those. We need 10 of these, so. Now we gotta build nine more of those, and then this goal is basically done. All right, and now we've done it. We have the Rocket League goal. And so now we just gotta build one more of these with blue highlights, and we can connect these to our base. So right now the stadium's looking really good. We're gonna build the outside ring that'll go around it and the designs on the actual field of blue and orange. However, it's not quite complete yet because we need to actually build cars to go in it. And for the soccer ball, I actually have something really cool. I went scouring the internet for a Lego soccer ball. And what I found was the only soccer ball that's actually the right size for this would be the Lego McDonald's promotional soccer ball. So these are like little Lego soccer figures. So you push them down and then the kicker kind of moves so you can just... But anyway, the important thing here is we have a Lego ball for our Rocket League. Now we need to actually build cars so that we can actually play Rocket League. To power each car, we're going to need a battery box. And this switch is on and off. And then we're going to connect that to a infrared receiver. The reason we have this is so that we can control two separate motors on the back of it with a remote. And for the drive motor, what's going to actually propel the car, we're going to use a regular motor. So now if we turn the battery box on and we push the red button, our motor starts. So we can control the speed of the car with this one. And then to turn the car, we're gonna actually use a servo motor. And the servo motor has this really unique property where it only turns so much. So that's how the electronics for this is gonna work. So what we gotta do is combine this into a tight, compact space and just basically create a base for the car so we can add designs and whatever. Let's build a couple chassis for the wheels so we can get the scale. <sighs> I want wheels with a lot of grip, but I also want them to not be ginormous. Snap together two of these axles, put the wheels on those. So now we kind of get the scale for one of our cars. Okay, so now we just gotta build the steering mechanism. So you put those in there. This will be rigid with the body, and this one will turn. Now, this is the worst way of just to build this, I've just showed you. Um, so that's not how you actually wanna do this. The way you actually wanna do this is by looking at all the mechanisms Legos made to turn things and copying them. Whatever this vehicle was, this one turned... That's the mechanism I just created. Oh, I'm dumb. We can use this mechanism, we just have to fix it. The connection point needs to be flush with this piece here. Yeah, that's why it's good to build Lego sets, because you learn a lot from it. Okay, so to make the steering mechanism actually work, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this piece in here, then snap in two of these, and then we're gonna take an axle and put two gears on it. The turning part kind of slides around a little bit, so you do need two gears, I think. Next what we wanna do is grab one of these, and this has like, you know, the little gear notches on it. It's like a gear rack, but small and connected to Technic. And I found a great way to attach wheels. I was looking at some Technic sets that Lego actually produced. Click on one of these and one of these. Wanna make sure the tires, the connections for those, are on the lift arm that's gonna be static. And then on the bottom side, we wanna actually put this piece, and this will control the steering. So now we just need to connect this. Now I've connected to my battery box. We wanna make sure it's straight. So this actually works, check it out. 
Okay, so that's perfect. And this does have a differential on it, technically, since these are both on separate axles. For the back, we actually do need to build a differential. So the next step is to build the back axle on the car and figure out how to motorize that. So this is the back axle we have, and this is wrong, because we actually need to put a differential on it. Put an axle on this side, put in your bevel gear like that. So you can see they can turn separately of each other. With a differential, it's actually easier for the car to turn because the wheel on the inside turns a lot less than the wheel on the outside. And if that's the same axle, you're gonna have skidding and it just is not efficient at all. And so now we just need to make this spin using this motor. So to attach this to this, we could do is we could take another block, put this inside of here. Does that fit? It doesn't fit, okay. This differential fits, we're gonna use this one. Nice, and then we can attach something to the top of that to make that spin. Mm. Can we put a little bevel gear through here? I think we can. So now, if we put that there, we can still spin it like that. And we have a good gear ratio here for torque. And then we just need to activate this gear. What we could do, we could mount this here, and then all we gotta do is make a little connection between these two gears. And the way we could do that is just with a track. Let's hope this fits around it. Put them together. Cool, okay, so now if we plug this in, this should work. And it does. And check this out. We stop one wheel, the other one still spins. Now that we have both those on there, we have turn right and left, and then we have forward and backwards. That's really compact too, so that's like perfect. Now we just gotta attach all these together using some lift arms and stuff. <laughs> okay, so now that we know this works, we just need to build one identical to it. Then we can cover them with designs and finish building the stadium. All right, so now we have two perfectly functioning buggies. The next step for these is to actually design them like the cars from Rocket League and make them look cool. I think I'm gonna make the first one look like the Octane. And while I'm doing that, I'm gonna tell you about this video's sponsor, Shopify. Shopify is an all-in-one commerce platform that lets you create your own online store easily. It has all the customization and theme options to match your brand, and it's user-friendly, so it's really easy to manage and learn. Last year, I sold a limited drop of Ublock Crash Dummies using Shopify, and I was able to create a storefront that matched my brand and the style that I wanted. I was definitely a beginner to selling things online, but using Shopify made it really easy to set up and manage. Thanks to you guys, we sold out of Ublots in like three days. <laughs> Shopify makes commerce easy and accessible for entrepreneurs at any scale to sell their products online or in person. And they have integrations with all the major social media platforms like YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. So it makes it easy to integrate your store with the following you already have or to grow your following alongside your Shopify store. Just finished designing the first car to look like the Octane from Rocket League. For the second one, I think I'm gonna base it off the Shopify Rebellion eSports car because it looks pretty cool and they sponsored this video. Creating a storefront with Shopify is a great way to grow your business or to get a head start on your entrepreneurial dream. That's a big word. So if you want to check out Shopify yourself, you can click the first link down in the description and sign up today. Huge thanks to Shopify for sponsoring this video. Now let's finish our Rocket League Stadium. All right, so I just finished designing the second one. As you can see, I basically just reskinned this design. So here, as you can see, we can go forward, we can go backward, we can turn. The other one works good as well. This is gonna be really, really fun. I'm glad these things work. The next step, we need to actually lay down the design for the stadium. We're gonna try and recreate the design for the DFH stadium. We're gonna need blue and orange pieces to lay down all over it. Luckily, I ordered so that it will match the actual design in the game. So first, there's a light blue gray cross. We gotta go all the way across this way. Okay, so we got the majority of the orange laid down. However, I just realized on this side in this little shape here, on the actual map that's filled in with dark bluish gray and to keep it real to the actual map, I have to fill that in with dark bluish gray. I found a super cool hammer. I put in my crazy Lego products video, but it's actually really nice. Boom, oh gosh. And we just gotta hammer in like a bunch more plates. All right, now these are all locked together. I'm just gonna do the same thing for the other side. Now we can put these back. Now we take this, and this thing slides under here. I accidentally measured wrong. Turns out this one is four studs longer than that one, but it doesn't really matter. The gold line up, that's all that matters. Also, I just wanna take a quick second to remind you guys to subscribe if you're not already. We make super cool uploads, and I'm trying to get to a million subscribers this year, so please consider subscribing. It would mean a lot. We only need like, couple hundred thousand. <laughs> so I'm building these areas three studs wide because it gives it like the perfect thickness. You know, this is actually a lot harder than I thought it would be. Can't wait to build the walls that go all the way around. <laughs> Those are gonna be the coolest part though. So I'm gonna take this one on my phone and I'm simply going to 
select it, and that we just need to now build in orange. <laughs> I had a simple trick to make building easier. If you have something that's like flat and you need to get like the opposite of it, instead of like doing all the measurements backwards. Look how nice that looks. It looks like there's some glyphs on the side, but it's really just supposed to be designed. So now the next step is to put ramps all the way around this. What I mean by that are walls. So they're gonna literally come out like this so that the cars and the ball will stay inside of this. So here's how we're gonna do that. So we basically wanna make a curve like this that goes all the way around, kind of like a slope so that the cars can like bump into it and basically the ball can roll down it. However, this needs to go all the way around our eight by five base plate setup. So I bought a bunch of Lego tiles. These are all six by six Lego tiles. So basically, if we take three of these, attach them like that, that creates a good slope. First, let's just attach some hinges together. Let's grab some plates, and since we're inverting the curve, instead of curving this way like we usually do, we're gonna curve this way, so that means we would just need a two by two. So we got a jump plate on that one, and then now, we can hinge it like that. We just need to build up the plate layers underneath so we get the right angle, and then we can copy it on the other side. All right, something like this should work to go around the entirety of the outside. However, there's the areas on the edges that are at like a 45 degree angle. And then let's just work on the curved part. I have these pieces, and these are some really interesting wedge plates. What's nice about these is if we attach it to this, it changes the angle. As you can see, when we put these together, they still kind of hold the angle, but it curves. So we need to do that again. All right, guys, check this out. This is gonna be satisfying. It was really satisfying in my head, to be fair. To actually attach it, I'm attaching these pieces. And these are like these little stand-up hinges, so I'm putting them backwards right there. Several points along this. That now attaches it to the base plate. So now on the back here, I'm putting in place these braces because it works a lot better using Technic, just a couple Technic pieces. And wow, does that work good. Look how beautiful that curve is. We're going to put glass up on the top. And the way we're gonna do that, these are Lego plastic panels that are clear. And so we're gonna take one of these on each of these and just go all the way. And we just gotta connect that with probably brackets. That'll go around the entire thing, it looks super cool. And then we're gonna do something really cool and add lights to actually make it light up. This is going to be like the coolest part of this whole project and it's gonna look really cool around the stadium. Now, if we wrap this all the way around the outside, is that cool or what? All right, guys, this is it. We finally finished it. It looks absolutely beautiful. We have both of the cars in place, ready to go. I think these actually turned out really good with the shaping and stuff. I even included some decals on the Shopify car, but the pieces connections may cause us some stability issues. Either way though, they look sick. The stadium just turned out really, really good. And the LEDs really, really make it look a lot cooler. Honestly, like I'm super happy with this thing. We have our ball here and this is gonna be what we're gonna try and get into the goal. Also, as a quick note, I modified the remotes. So as you can see, this is how you steer and this would be forward and backward. And we're gonna actually play Rocket League. I have my sister Ella who's gonna come over and actually play with us, and we're gonna see who can score the most goals in eight minutes. And now as you can see, it's on, the wheels reset, and we're ready to go. So this is Ella, my sister, and <laughs> Ow! Okay. we're gonna actually play Rocket League. So Ella, choose your car. Three. Okay. So we're gonna go for eight minutes and see who can get the most goals in eight minutes. Wait, three, two, one. I kind of figured those would break off. Oh gosh. <laughs> I don't know what it did. Ooh, rail ride. Uh, oh! Oh! No! Go on! <laughs> hey! Yes. Go for me! No! Oh my gosh, no! Wait! Yeah! Yes. Two points for me! So I'm two to one right now, and I had a tiny bit of practice, so I'm gonna give you like a five second head start. Such a good background. I'm pausing the timer again. You wanna make a 16 Got point it. turn? <laughs> okay. Go. Oh yeah, I forgot I was giving you a head start. Nope. Cards are very breakable. Hey, I have a really uh, wait. I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it! This is so unfair oh, though, because I can just guard like that. This is actually pretty fun. Hey, yes. hey, look! No, no, no! Yes, yes! You have to actually wait. hit it. I got it, I got it, I got no. it, I got it. I got it, I got it. <laughs> the cars are a little breakable, but that's just because I designed them to be like, look like the actual cars. But we're just removing parts as we go, you know, kind of how the game works. Sorry. <laughs> the wall is just taking it right now. Being good. No! Yay! Oh, oh, my 
car is just gonna be with nothing left. Nope, nope. Ah! Oh man, this is fun. Get out of my goal. That's, That's cheap. my goal. You can't park it. You said <laughs> wow, it's a lot faster without the armor on. It's kind of an advantage. Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. Ah. Yes. All right, there's a minute 40 left on the clock, and it's three to four. Go. How can we always start before go? Yes. That's called guarding. Take it off, take it off. Oh, your whole car's breaking. <laughs> yes, I don't know yes. I'm so good here. Ah, oh, that was it, Ella. Which means hey, I win. We look equally torn up, though. That's true. Huge thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, click on one of these videos popping up on the screen. And make sure to check out this video sponsor, Shopify. First link down in the description. GG. Why do you just say good game? No, because GG is good game. Is that hip? No, you say GG. Yeah.